now that you have a vision for how we are going to help our students to be successful, let's use this technology to deliver that so that you are connected to your partners, so that you know what's going on, so that you have a picture of your student as a whole person. And let's go in and make sure you're connecting with them, that you see them, that you're solving your problems. And Drenna, one of the things that I love for our schools is going to be the outcome measurements that we are going to give because we have technology to help us do that, right? We're going to be able to say, you did this intervention and the result of that was this. And that is so powerful for our campus to be able to have access to. everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Cap and Gown this week. Um, We're doing it a little bit differently than normal. So one thing is that Matt and I are on a campus today. So we um, have recorded today's Cap and Gown, but um, thrilled for you to be joining us. Um, This Cap and Gown is actually one that I have been looking forward to. You remember a couple of weeks ago, I um, introduced you to Dr. Jaretta Nelson, from Credo, and we had a great conversation about how you leverage really powerful teams. And she talked a little bit about her Moving the Needle project um, that that Credo is doing for schools all over the country. Well, today we have an official um, announcement that Credo and Ferris are entering into a partnership together. And all of the exciting things that that means and how that's going to impact you guys and your students, that's what she and I um, got to have a conversation about uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so I'm so excited for you to hear the good work that we're going to be doing and the ways that we're going to be impacting student uh, success in the coming years. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoy this. Hello, everyone. So excited about today. Jaretta, you are a place. You are out traveling. I am, Rachel. I am uh, at my parents' home and about to head to one of our amazing campuses. Uh, We're going to talk about this amazing campus uh, at some point, you and I, because this will be a a great example of the partnership that uh, we are embarking upon. So, yep. Glad to be well, with you today. I'm so glad for us to be able to spend this time together. And I was wondering if you could start with helping us understand, I mean, how would you describe the work that Credo does? So we have been around for 27 years. This is just a remarkable thing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, our work has always centered around the student experience uh, since our the inception. Actually, interestingly enough, we started in space and place and it was around how do you design uh, a living learning, a learning experience inside and outside the classroom for students. And uh, we quickly discovered that when we got to campuses, there wasn't much in the way of planning or (laughs) sometimes fundraising. And so moved quickly to say, we better do uh, or add some of the consulting side on strategy. So very quickly on in our early years, we added strategy to that space and place design. And that strategy grew really quickly. And in that strategy, we incorporated work around enrollment, right? So much, so many of our institutions are tuition driven and thinking about enrollment is is really key. And we grew that and we grew fundraising and we really grew strategic planning. And we have always been about strategic thinking and about strategic planning and that has always guided our work. And then it, it didn't take too long for that work to really expand enough to 100 institutions, to 150 institutions. You know, we're, we're up over 400. Uh, we're going to hit 500 this year. And uh, in about the fifth or sixth year, we were beginning to say, we, we see some patterns here, some trends. Let's do a little bit of research on what we've collected and on our kinds of campuses. And so we began to develop what we call the thriving framework. And that framework has helped us craft the dimensions of a thriving institution. We know that word is not solely ours, but uh, we claim it for thinking about uh, a healthy institution that is adaptive and able to really move forward and center, one of the center dimensions of that is student learning and success, right? Always has been. 
So that work, along with courageous and collaborative leadership, really has compelled us to say, how do we connect with presidents, with cabinets, with boards, with middle talent on campus to drive their capacity and ability to serve students? And how do we position students as the main thing, right? What's that phrase, keeping the main thing the main thing, right? That's yeah. <laughs> always been the focus. And, and really from there is where we develop the Moving the Needle project that we're gonna talk about today. Um, now we've done enrollment work, we've done, we, we do work in academic prioritization. We do, we do the work at the strategic level to really help the institution under the umbrella of strategy, really think about both the short and the long term. But the main driver has got to be student success. So it's been a joy to have an extraordinary team. We've got a team of folks who come from campuses, all walks of life on campus and all types of campuses, though the majority of the work that we do is with independent colleges. Every single member of our team has been a part of either a community college or a four-year public. So, mm -hmm. you know, the problems are the same. They're embedded in some different kinds of restrictions on community college and, and four-year publics and private institutions. But the strategy around um, developing people and executing against a strategy is very similar. So our team is just wildly amazing. In fact, uh, one of our strategic anchors in Credo's own strategic plan is caring for our extraordinary talent. That's what we call them. And uh, because we wanna be partners, not, not vendors, not consultants, right? We walked all the way to the dark side of consulting and we don't wanna be seen that way. We wanna be as a partner. And so our team has to be equipped to do that. And they are absolutely student success driven and uh, enough of generalists, you know, I think you, you know many of them, Rachel, they know enough about how an institution should thrive and then have specialization in the area of explicitly helping a student move from where they are now to where they need to go and doing that through amazing collaboration. So yeah, we're excited. Awesome. Um, I just want to reflect on your team. I do know so many of them and they are powerhouses. I mean, every single one of them, I come away from my conversations with them just thinking what wonderful people to be able to spend time with and have an impact at a school in the ways that they're engaging all across the board with everybody on a campus. So I really do love your team. It is a great one. So you guys join me every week for Cap and Gown, and I'm really grateful for that as we get to talk about lots of issues in higher education and thinking about State of the Union and those sorts of things. Um, but I don't often get to talk about Ferris Resources, um, and I thought it would be, in light of this exciting um, partnership announcement, I thought it would be really fun to just talk to you about um, our company and where it came from and um, how we work with schools. So Matt and I both work at, worked at an institution um, in an office that was really unique. Uh, it was the Office of Career and Academic Development. It was under the first year program. You've heard me talk about that before. And we had an opportunity to start developing technology to support practitioners work. So we wanted technology that was gonna make it easier for you to identify students who are struggling by getting in referrals, um, by being able to look at data. I needed technology that was gonna support all of the work that I was doing with students. So keeping track of where I was in the process and making sure that I had good contact and that I was bringing in the right team members to be able to support students. And so what's so fun about our technology is it really came out of people who were doing the work, who needed specific tools um, to help us be more effective and more efficient. So in 2010, we left the institution and started Ferris Resources full time. And in the beginning, we were really slow and thoughtful about what we built, about what partnerships we made with schools and how we supported them because we wanted to understand the best technology to build as a tool, not as a distraction, not as something that you have to do because the technology is telling you we wanted it to really um, support our practitioner work. And we've just continued to grow um, ever since then. One thing that I really love is we are um, not vendors. We are partners with all of our campuses. We really want for you guys to be successful. We are invested in that success. 
We love your students. We work hard every single day to make sure that we are um, developing things that are gonna be really valuable for you, whether that is workflows that we can deliver to you or new technology tools. It's really important to us that students are at the center of that and that we are helping you help them to be successful. So we think of all of our schools as partners. Not only are we supporting the good work that our schools are doing, but also we are always listening um, about new things that you need, about new um, issues that are coming up, about ways that we can invest in things like academic recovery or um, new tools that you're telling us that you need. And so we are developing new technology all the time. We have two releases every year that we push out to try to address the issues um, that you guys are telling us about. And it's such a great place to be where we can create the things that you guys need to be able to be successful. So we have a great team at Ferris Resources. Um, I was calculating the other day how many years our team has spent in higher education. It's a lot. Many of us have been practitioners in lots of different ways. We represent all sorts of different um, students. So you've heard me say before that I was an at-risk student, so I'm always thinking about that perspective. But on our team, we have first-generation students. Um, and we have uh, all sorts of different perspectives represented. Um, and that's the kind of expertise that you get, not only designing our technology, but also as we're helping our schools work through special um, workflows and identifying the students who are struggling, connecting with them, solving their problems, and then measuring those interventions. So that's a little introduction to FAIRS resources. So Jaretta, part of our conversation today, now that we've introduced both of our perspectives in higher education and the work that we're doing on campuses, the reason that this partnership between Credo and Ferris makes sense, um, it really, I, I think back to years and years ago, in fact, I looked it up, we first met you and I on October 4th, 2010. <laughs> You sent in a demo request. This is five months after I left my job at, at an institution to do Ferris full-time. So we were new um, and we did a demo for you. What's funny about it is we couldn't schedule a demo for like six months because we were both so busy. So <laughs> although you're, you first reached out, we had like an email exchange back and forth for six months. And then finally we did our, our demo. And I'm thinking about why the Credo Ferris partnership makes sense mm. is um, really embodied for me in our exchange after we finally got to do a demo and spend some time on the phone. Mm. And you said, hey, what you're doing with technology and the way you're designing your technology is a solution for so many of the conversations that you have with leadership about how do we put the student at the center. Mm -hmm. And I remember that day so well, not only because we were a new company and I was nervous, like, hey, are we doing the right thing? But your articulation of we go in to change culture, we go in to make a difference in the systemic way, in strategy, exactly as you've explained, and yet we need this tool that then is going to help practitioners who are on the ground to translate that to students at the center. Mm. So I really loved that perspective. And I think it continues to be true to this day. Mm -hmm. um, also, I was thinking about over the years, you've been so kind to send schools our direction. So when you're doing the strategic work and you're like, hey, I think that you might need a tool to help you be successful in this to send a school our way. And Jaretta, every time we have a partner school, they kill it. They do an awesome job. The outcome is so remarkable. Yeah. And I think we just all got to the point where we were like, why are we not doing this for all school, all of our schools? <laughs> right? I think because we take a little bit of our own medicine in, in some regard. Number one, I think we had to, to both be confirmed that the, the approach was working, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. the approach that Pharaohs takes um, in really solving some of the identified issues, right? It, it, providing some of the technology and, and the strategy at, at that solution level. But I think we both wanted to be sure that what we offered had enough 
depth and practice to it that we could come to each other and say, I think there, there can be reason to partner together as well. You know, what I learned early on, and I think this is why we think this, um, I don't know if it's a marriage yet or not, but our, <laughs> but our uh, much more than just a, a referral kind of service. Yeah. What we, what we recognized was the, the moving the needle project itself is built to position student success at the center of strategy. And to do that, we have to get the attention of the president and the cabinet. Yeah. And we're finding out in the last two years, even pre-pandemic, we have to get the attention of the board. So we're doing more and more board work to say, remember why you're in business in the first place. Uh -huh. Remember the mission. Um, and then that team, the president and the cabinet, have to be built in such a way that they can collaborate, right? Big difference between cooperate and yeah. collaborate. They have to think like an owner of the university versus an employee who just sees themselves serving in a silo. And they really have to build everything in their power, uh, all what they do in their divisions and their areas toward that same goal. And we get there pretty quickly with them. You know, we use good data to do that. We use a lot of development to do that. We raise their awareness. Our second step then is to get the attention of the middle. And that middle talent, something I wanna talk more about today is, is really where the, the rubber meets the road, where the engine, the backbone, all that language. And what we found is we can get there and spend our time in executing against solutions. But when that, that middle talent turns around and says, but here's all I have to use, right? This is, this is it. And they'll hand us whatever is their current system. And by the way, there can sometimes be a hundred systems. I know. <laughs> and it's just, it's over and over again. And this, and one individual team would say, well, we use this system. And this person would say, we use this system. So Credo, you've been telling us what a good strategy would be. And we're ready for that. But we have 57 different systems. What do we do? So when I came to you back in the, the beginning, in that October date, and what you and I and Matt have talked about over and over again is how can we simplify what the institution uses to think about strategic student success at, at, in a way that all practitioners can see the same thing, can act in the same way, and can know what someone else is doing. Yeah. And we've been so dependent on the institution to do that. And our partnership together allows us to say, you know, the strategy we're putting into place up here, here's a system that allows that strategy to simply put, uh, be put into execution in the fastest way possible. Yeah, and I love and, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think um, it's really interesting to think about the how technology in higher education has been developed so often as a specialized software. Absolutely. And the reason that happens is because they're trying to solve a specific problem. They are not coming back to the strategic level and saying, but students are whole. Students are completely, their experience is not siloed. They're not going here and going here and go, they're whole people. And so when you have this specialized software that solves your problem, what you sacrifice there is that we don't approach our students like they're whole people. Um, and being able to say, we need technology that's going to be able to support this good work that you guys are doing with the board and with presidents to say, this is how we keep students at the center of everything I think is really vital. So, yeah. I love it. And, and I'll, you know, I, I, maybe I didn't say this at the outset, uh, Rachel, but the origination of Credo was, has always been about students. We, we, when we first started out, we said it's about the institution thriving. And we, we made a pivot ourselves uh, four or five years ago and said, we're, we as a company are gonna position the student at the center. So rather than just saying the institution has to, to be our priority, we're saying the student is our priority. So we're going in and telling that institution, we're all in with you in this regard. And to do that, to put the student in the center means that we have to break down the silos that exist on the campus. And the campus has to be equipped to see the student as whole as well. And you know, I think one of the things we've learned about working with middle talent, which is why we're gonna be such fantastic and are such fantastic partners with Pharaohs, is the practitioner needs the tools to do that. Yeah. And the practitioner needs to feel like I'm connected to all of the other things that are happening for the student. Because I have never I don't know about you, but I haven't met anyone on a camp, very few people on a campus who don't want students to be successful. 
you know, I had one registrar tell me the reason I like a long line out the door at the beginning of the semester is that way I can talk to every single student. And I was wow. like, okay, well, we have a little of an oxymoron. <laughs> we, don't, we don't really want the line. But, but I haven't met anyone who doesn't want the student to be successful. Yeah. But what happens is I have so little resource and so little control that I'm going to get what I need to serve the student. And I, I have a hard time thinking about what is the bigger picture. And so we bring in MTN the strategy of the bigger picture. And Pharos brings to us that execution of that strategy that, that shows the whole student. So I love it. It's, I love that. It works great. It's very exciting. Yeah. So, you know, as we're thinking about this new partnership, I think at the center of the, the question is, why is this good for a school? So why is this partnership going to make such an impact for students um, all across the country? And I think about the way that Credo holds space to discuss strategy and make good decisions, not rush decisions, not responding to a problem decisions, but good decisions about how we keep our students at the center. And the fact that you are constantly able to go back and be like, we need to refine that. Now we're going to focus on this piece. Now we need to think about this part of the system. So you really are holding this space on a campus to say, we are going to make great decisions about what we do here. And then Ferris gets to come in for our practitioners and say, now that you have a vision for how we are going to help our students to be successful, Let's use this technology to deliver that so that you are connected to your partners, so that you know what's going on, so that you have a picture of your student as a whole person. And let's go in and make sure you're connecting with them, that you see them, that you're solving your problems. And Drana, one of the things that I love for our schools is going to be the outcome measurements that we are going to give because we have technology to help us do that, right? We're going to be able to say, you did this intervention and the result of that was this. And that is so powerful for our campus to be able to have access to. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, um, I, I think I, what I would add, if, if you want me to talk about the partnership itself, right? What, what the value would be is the, the moving the needle project is uh, clarifies the entire student experience, assesses it, documents that, process maps it from the top of the enrollment funnel. So we always say from the time they're admitted, what are the promises you are making there? How are they being kept is the question, right? Mm -hmm. Document all of that. And we identify where are the opportunities and how are those opportunities going to be uh, designed into a strategy that can be executed. And once that's executed, um, what's next? Right? What's the order? What's the priority? And what's the, the combination of the right strategies that the institution can, you say, hold and part, partly I want to say tolerate, right? Because yeah. you can only get so much done right on campus. So let's work on these three key initiatives to ensure that they are uh, successfully and fully leveled up or improved, et cetera. And then let's take on the next one. Let's continue. And we want to be able to measure that. We want to be able to say, this is how that's taking place. And Pharos and our success intelligence platform is going to allow us to measure the interventions that we develop and design as a system, as an intervention, and at the individual level. And what I love about the partnership is we can provide institutional strategy and still have individual intervention. And you got to have both, right? And that is really the secret sauce of these two. Um, and then push a button and be able to say, how impactful was that, right? Yeah, just I love that. Rich. It's very exciting, very exciting. So we have um, talked about our history together, that we have this philosophy of, of keeping students at the center. Um, we've talked about how this is going to impact um, our schools and our students and higher education overall. And now I wanna talk about the specifics of what we're actually gonna do. So what does this actually look like? What is this partnership? How are, how are our schools gonna experience that? Um, you talked earlier about our success intelligence platform, which I am so thrilled about 
because it really does take this idea of the entire campus being a system and put some technology behind that idea. So mm -hmm. success intelligence platform is a way for us to provide a cohesive view of what's happening for students. Um, it takes all of our tools that Ferris provides in this technology to help you find students who are struggling, connect with them in lots of different ways, solve their really specific problems, and then have this measurement of outcome. And so mm -hmm. we want to, through that platform, push um, data so that you can have really informed decisions all over the campus, uh, in lots of different ways, we want to make sure that you have clear pictures of your impact cohorts. Here are students that if we can deploy our resources, it's really going to make a difference for student success and retention. And also, Jaretta, that platform is going to provide so much information just in terms of what are all of the sources of data on your campus that are going to come together into this data lake that our success intelligence platform is providing? And then how do we look through all of that information and give you benchmarking? How are you doing compared to other institutions your size? Mm -hmm. How are you managing processes of not enrolled students? How are you supporting your first generation students? This platform is going to take all of the data and push out um, information. And we talk about it in terms of actionable data. Yes. It's not noisy data. It's not like all the things swirling around. It is actionable data that again, is gonna keep that student at the center and is gonna help you figure out how to, to provide support through to uh, the, their graduation. Um, and for you, this idea of exactly how this partnership is going to um, provide support and, and help for a campus. Can you speak about your side? You bet. You bet. Um, so our Moving the Needle project is a five-year partnership. So uh, what I love about that and that aligns with the way Pharos approaches things as well is we are a partner long term. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we found, Rachel, I, I designed the project, started the project about the year I called you. <laughs> uh, in that year. And uh, the challenge for me from Credo was, well, we're doing pretty well in strategy. We're helping institutions that way. We've got the surviving to thriving. We've got the thriving framework. We're, we're doing great strategic planning. But the work we keep doing in, in student success doesn't seem to stick. So yeah. we would go out and do at, from Credo, we'd go out and do really good work, you know, living learning or first year experience or a high uh, uh, at risk population of some kind, we would do that kind of work. And yet it was, it was siloed that work. So when you call back a year later and say, what are your outcomes? Well, number one, they couldn't measure them, by the way, uh, part of the reason why we're together. Uh, but also it wasn't, it wasn't permeating. I just went full stop. We, we, so I brought some of the best brains together. We turned our framework into and our approach into why do students stay, right? Rather than spending our time on what's wrong with them, remediating that, assuming that they're not gonna be successful. We wanna think about the students on our campuses who uh, out, outperform <laughs> what they should do and said, well, so what is happening there? And when you look at that, for those students, they were having key experiences that reflect that horizontal, seamless kind of experience of a student, right? They were feeling a psychological sense of belonging. They were learning. <laughs> they were having a success academically, but also connecting with faculty and finding that sort of academic experience. They saw a clear and compelling pathway towards their first job not 25 careers, but the first job, right? We saw that their families were engaged in some way or their network of support was engaging, especially when we looked at the first gen students who were outperforming. And we also found students who were staying were those who came and said, the goals I have are actually being matched here or the promises that were made to me in that view book, I see them coming true uh, yeah. as I come forward. And, the, and another thing we found out about why students stay is what I'm borrowing to be here seems worth it. And that is so key, that value proposition. Well, those six dimensions themselves, of identity and, and value proposition, et cetera, those things tie together and give you a picture of the student experience. So when we come in at the beginning of our five years, we first pour ourselves into the cabinet 
and into the key leaders in middle talent. And then we get the campus ready, right? We, we actually have a middle talent development workshop that we offer. And we just keep saying to all campuses for all five years, bring us everybody you want. <laughs> send that. them all, send them all through. Because we've just found campuses don't have capacity or finance to do yeah. it. So people haven't had any professional development. And so we're, we're saying, come in and find out what kind of a leader you are. So the work we do with Middle Talent is around individual leadership. We have a, a validated instrument that we use and we unpack that with a pro and we teach uh, institutional higher ed data 101. Right? <laughs> you know, some people don't know what net revenue and, and discount rate might be. And we just yeah. think every single person leading on a campus today needs to have a higher ed kind of framework. So we work on Middle Talent. We work with the cabinet to get ready. You guys come in, right? We're bringing in our partners, getting a foundation of the ability to collect, to benchmark, to monitor everything that's gonna take place. And then we do a deep, deep dive assessment. We process map both quantitatively and qualitatively from the top of the funnel to graduation. And from that, that big wide set of data that you're collecting for us, but we're also process mapping of policies and systems and experiences for students. And we will, with your help, because of the data that you'll provide and with the campus, we'll say, what are those three areas? Let's go. Yeah. While you are helping us and our partnership with Pharos is helping us ensure that we're using data to do that, that we're intervening at the, uh, at the individual level as we need to be, that we're getting students cleared before the first day of classes. Yes. <laughs> All possible, right? That we're partnering in that way. And we're then layering our success intelligence platform will help us measure our success initiatives. And those are things that are common. I, I have to say, people say, well, what, is it magic? You know, is there like a secret sauce? And I, you know, the, the essence is execution of good strategy. Yeah, and what we find is campuses are doing way too much instead of the three to five key high impacts that have the best chance for success on their campus and are most inclusive. I, we have found on every campus, there's good work being done, but many students get left out of it, right? They're not adapted. They're not inclusive. We haven't thought about today's student. And so we're coming in to assess and begin that execution. And we've got the success intelligence platform now sitting side by side with us, measuring the impact of that. And when we hit that first milestone, and there will be many of them, and we move to the finish line to, to bump up retention, we just keep going and going and going. <laughs> don't, stop, don't, right? stop. don't stop. And we'll never, we'll never be able to stop, right? Huh. I mean, anybody here who's listening today thinks we can get this fixed, you're living in a different world, right? Yeah. Our students will continue to change. Our challenges will continue to change. And we have to have systems and a process of thinking that's more adaptive. And that, that's the process of thinking and moving the needle, equipping our middle talent and the success intelligence platform that is a, enables us to read the data yeah. uh, ongoing. So we promise five percentage points, Rachel, in, in that partnership. But you and I know we want to bump that way up, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I am so excited. Um, we've been doing the hard work behind the scenes to yeah. make all of this happen and to um, be great partners together. But then when we talk about doing the work on campuses, I just get so excited because I know it's going to have a huge impact on students. Um, and it's such good work, Jaretta. It's just it just makes me so happy. You and I have talked before about the impact of one student being successful and how that has a ripple effect in their family and in the world and on and on, right? And so this idea of how we are going to make a difference for individual students and student success as a whole just makes me very excited. So um, that's, yeah. a, that's a shared goal, right? I mean, I think that's why we're, we're all in because this is not a, just can we help one school at a time? We're, we're scaling this with a deep desire to say, it's time to, it's time to impact this industry in this moment. This is a moment to do that. And we've studied all of the work of the last 30, 40 years, right? And the last 10 years, all the dollars 
across this country and the globe that have been invested in trying to help students and we can't seem to move the needle and you are having success and we are having success particularly when we're in partnership together and we think we can we can hit that million students right and a hundred thousand of the of the folks who are standing in service to them it's it's super exciting i love that as a goal i'm very excited about it so um for those of you who are listening we would love for you to have more information about this partnership you can go to the credo website site. Jarrah, you said there's lots of great information there as well as um, direct connection to you. So if they have questions, that yeah, would be a great a great landing page for our website and also a series of videos from those who are currently doing the project or who finished the project, provosts and presidents and, and registrars. You know, I just, I love when middle talent folks say, at first I thought this was gonna to be too challenging and now I would never change it, right? It changed the way we do our work. So I there's great that. testimonials there, good results too. And our frequently asked questions, Rachel is there. And then we'll also have ongoing updates about our partnership together between us and our work around the success intelligence platform. Yeah, that will be great. And you guys know, if you want to um, go to our website, we'll have, we have a lot of resources for you there. But please hear, um, we are just very excited about this impact. And Jaretta, I love the goal of Credo to positively impact a million students and 100,000 leaders that stand in service of them, which I just think is so beautifully put. That is something that everybody um, can get behind and be really excited about. So we're, right here. we're thrilled. Yeah. Here. Good to spend time with you, friend. I know that we will get to spend more time together um, <laughs> as the months go on and the years go on, but I'm so happy to be able to be a partner with you. Oh, we're, we are honored. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to spend time with you. Bye.